Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. We hope that you enjoy this next segment on Baitfish. Be sure to drop us a like below and we'll get right to it. Good morning, Anchored Outdoors. My name is Kevin Feenstra and it's a beautiful morning here on the Muskegon River in West Michigan. This is a really big, beautiful, diverse fishery and it has a lot of different types of fish in it because it's uh, in a place that has warm and cool water and we also have migratory fish. Uh, because this river is so diverse and fertile, it's got a ton of different kinds of minnows. And so I spend a lot of my time uh, using flies that imitate minnows. Uh, and I do that whether I'm fishing for warm water fish or for cool water fish like trout or uh, migratory fish like steelhead and brown trout. And so I'm just going to talk to you a bit about that. You may wonder why you would use a fly that looks like a minnow when you're out fly fishing. Uh, you would think that you'd just be imitating insects or uh, things like that, but fly fishermen imitate a lot of different things. You can imitate things like frogs and minnows and crayfish, and if you go to salt water, you can imitate shrimp and crabs. Um, and people will use things that imitate mice for big brown trout. You might use a fly that looks like a, a duck for a muscalunge. So, um, so really, fly fishermen can tie flies that imitate just about anything. And so I'm just going to talk to you about what my focus is, and that's fishing flies that look like minnows. So when you go to a fly shop and you look in the bins, a lot of times you'll see these big flies that are shaped a lot like minnows. And uh, that can be kind of a challenge to figure out which fly to use because they come in many shapes and sizes. So I'm just going to try to break down to you uh, how I classify the different types of flies that look like minnows. So, um, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about something that's specific to um, areas that have migratory fish, and that's going to be things that look like uh, little baby salmon and steelhead or baby trout. And if you're fishing a cold water river and it has uh, migratory fish in it or that it has trout in the spring, uh, that's when typically baby trout are born, and so we're going to use flies that a lot of times uh, imitate these baby trout. Now, baby trout uh, a lot of times have a marking on the side, and the reason I use this fly is to show you that this fly has some of those par markings on it. Um, because these are kind of a small food source, they have kind of a big head, and they taper down to a tail that's typically a little bit square shaped. Um, but because these have uh, are kind of a small food source and you're trying to catch a big fish with it, you really have to uh, do things that make it look really appealing as a small bait fish. Um, big trout or bass or whatever feed on fry because they're vulnerable. They're typically in big schools and they can come in and eat uh, fry at will because they're just they're, they're not a very wary bait fish. So, um, so you have to either make your fly a little more appealing than the other flies by uh, trying to add a little sparkle to it or uh, you need to get your fly really close to the fish because a big fish isn't going to move very far for a single fry. Or you can do other things like maybe add a second fly on and fish two at a time. That's also a good way to do it. But fry, because they grow quickly and because they're generally pretty small, um, they're not very wary, like I said, so they're, what they're going to do is stay kind of high in the water column and they're going to survive just by having mass numbers uh, of, of uh, their bait fish. But fry come and go pretty quickly. I fish fry until maybe um, from the month of March all the way through uh, late May into early June. And at that point I start to rely on minnows that are in the river year round. Now, one of the main classifications I use for minnows is I use something called a shiner. And uh, I tie shiner flies for smallmouth bass a lot of times. Uh, but shiners a lot of times become a really prime bait fish in the middle of the summer uh, and all the way through the fall and winter. And uh, I use, shiners are typically fairly big at the front and they taper down and they're common in just about any river especially if river, rivers that have weeds or a lot of timber and structure in it so um, 
and there's a lot of different flies that imitate shiners if you go into your fly shop and you see a big white fly a lot of times that'll be a generic shiner imitation shiners uh, congregate in the summer by weeds they grow really quickly and uh, then when the weeds die off in the winter uh, the migratory fish and the trout that are in a river might gorge on shiners and uh, shiners swim all over the water column small shiners often live pretty high in the water column whereas bigger shiners live in the lower parts of the water column and there's other bait fish that are shaped like shiners that have this kind of tapered shape to them they're kind of thick at the front and narrow at the back but the, it just about every river is going to have some they might be shiners there's uh, fish called chubs that we have in many river systems and uh, you might also have migratory fish that kind of migratory bait fish that fall into this category like shad or uh, a uh, uh, alewife in the Great Lakes region so there's a lot of different things that can be imitated with a shiner pattern and again these are kind of long and tapered they typically have silver or I use kind of a pearl color to give them a little flash because when they turn on their sides naturally in the water or if a bait or if a game fish is pursuing them they'll see that flash and so it's very important to have a fly with a little bit of pearl or silver in it when you're fishing shiner patterns and they can be a variety of colors Typically I, I uh, imitate them with gray or with uh, um, gray olive or perhaps even a cinnamon depending on the species. In the Midwest our most common species is actually called a common shiner and it's a pretty big bait and the fish will feed on them both when they're uh, at their shiny color but they also take a little bit more of a rosy color in the spring when you're fishing them and hence we use that cinnamon color sometimes. Now, I'm going to talk to you about another class of bait fish. While we have shiners and fry that live kind of up in the water column, they can be kind of high in the water column. Um, there's another class of bait fish that lives right near the bottom. And a lot of times, if you look at the bottom of the river, you'll see things scurrying around when you move your feet. And uh, these could be things like sculpins, which are a bait fish that has a big broad head typically lives under rocks somewhat nocturnal but uh, very very good bait fish uh, in the Midwest we have things like ground gobies which are an invasive species and the fish love to eat those and then there's things like darters which are a small member of the perch family that we often use um, throughout the winter months so I'm going to explain to you how I look at these and uh, and you can kind of go from there. One of my favorite things to imitate is a sculpin. And it's a fish that I use year round. It's something that I can rely on just about any day of the year. And it's a big bait fish. Typically they have a big head and they have big pectoral fins. Now, most of these bottom dwelling bait fish, they live on the bottom and they don't have the ability to regulate how they go up and down in the bottom. They don't have what's called a swim bladder. So they're basically stuck on the bottom. And they can move very quickly for short spurts, but then they fall back down to the bottom. And that's why when you read about people fishing sculpin patterns, a lot of times they'll talk about a strip, 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 pause. And that's because most of these bottom dwelling bait fish, they can only go quickly for a short period and then they drop. And um, sculpins do not have any scales so in addition to not being able to go fast for far, they make a really good meal for a big predator fish because they don't have defensive scales on their body. So their main protection is camouflage. And if you come to a river and you want to fish a sculpin pattern or really any of these bait, bottom dwelling bait fish, all you have to do is look at the bottom of the river because the color of the bait fish is going to typically match the bottom of the river. So again, this is a sculpin pattern. Most bottom dwelling bait fish fall into what we call the earth toned family, which is flies that uh, that take on the color of the bottom, so they could be olive or tan or um, a brown color. These are common earth tones. 
another bait fish that I use a lot is called a goby and gobies look a lot like sculpins they have a big head they have big pectoral fins and they typically have big eyes and gobies are an invasive species that have come into the Great Lakes and they're one of my favorite invasive species if you can imagine that because most invasive species are just horrible for our resources but the goby actually has made and some of our rivers and lakes has made the fish a lot bigger because they reproduce like crazy uh, they often feed on juvenile zebra mussels which are another invasive species so I guess that gives them a bonus point and uh, um, typically they're kind of a lighter tan color unlike sculpins they tend to sit on the top of rocks which makes them uh, really vulnerable to predation and they just survive by sheer reproduction in a system now uh, one other thing to one other type of bottom dwelling bait fish is a lot smaller and we call that a darter and darters to me are really specialized bait fish they're often very colorful you can see the color in that fly this one imitates a rainbow darter um, but darters are really useful because if you compare them to that big goby pattern they're a lot narrower bait fish but they do live on the bottom in the same way as sculpins and gobies and I use these a lot during the winter months mainly because uh, they're in the part of the bottom of the river which is where the migratory fish are like steelhead and brown trout and uh, but the the nice thing about them is because they are narrow and sparse I can sink them to the bottom really easily and during the dead cold of winter that's a great time to use a darter pattern and that's true for the migratory fish but the trout also love them in the winter so if your river has these you may want to think about looking looking at them uh, they come in a lot of sizes and shapes and uh, they can be anywhere from a tan color to a really bright color uh, depending on the river and the species but they're a member of the perch family a very good food source and a high percentage of the biomass in a lot of the rivers in the Midwest so you might want to look into these now just to complicate things a little bit more not every bait fish that you tie um, actually looks like a bait fish in nature a lot of times um, I'll use things that are bright really bright and colorful I call this a kitchen sink leech I use this a lot during the winter months um, but it's just a broad array of different colors and it uh, doesn't look like anything in nature but yet the fish like to eat them it's kind of generally shaped like a bait fish but this is just designed to get a fish a game fish to look from a distance at it and to come scooting across the river and eat it just because it's so very attractive and this would be a typical one you can see there's really no minnow in nature that looks like this um, there's more subtle varieties of things like this like uh, these are a couple of um, muddler minnow type patterns that I use an awful lot and again this one is purple and one is blue and they have a lot of flash so um, you can see they don't really look like anything in nature necessarily by color or by flash but they're generally shaped like a sculpin on a side note if you go into your fly shop and you see a, a brown muddler minnow in the box there that's a good basic uh, sculpin imitation to always have in your box but these attractor minnows uh, can be something really big you might use something like this for northern pike and again doesn't really look or color like anything in nature but yet it's kind of shaped like a big minnow and it's a color that uh, the predator fish really like to eat now just one final note uh, before I end my little talk here that when bait game fish look at a minnow sometimes you're fishing to them at eye level or you're trying to get it right at their in front of their face and with those that's when you want to use a really subtle and natural colored fly um, but if the if you're fishing it pretty close to the surface or higher in the water column the fish is expecting to be seeing the belly of the minnow that you're imitating and so you'll want to use a little bit lighter color a lot of times when you're fishing higher in the water column and a lot of times that's a yellow or a, a pink or a white and uh, so 
Um, so anyways, my final note is just bear in mind whether you're fishing, if you're fishing slow and deep right in front of the fish, then use something very natural a lot of times, very uh, earth tony colors. But as you move up in the water column, the fish is looking up at your fly. Maybe something brighter or lighter colored might be something that would work better. So, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this little talk about the uh, bait fish. And these are things that you can apply to any river you go to to some degree or another. So thanks for watching and have a great day and good fishing.